Thank you, Chiara. Thank you, Ho. Uh, so, um, actually, I'd like to speak to you about uh, full flow application in congenital heart disease, uh, but I, want, I don't want to bother you with all current application, all the statement, all the research uh, analysis about complex parameters. I just want to speak to you about the real life, uh, because I think that's the most important message today uh, to stress, uh, is the issue that full flow is really changing the um, uh, MRI practice, especially in congenital heart disease. Uh, it changed totally my life uh, since three years ago. Uh, so this is our actually my topic today. Uh, so I will just underline, I will just offer to you an overview about um, some specific topics such as tetralogy of fallout, um, the evaluation of pulmonary perfusion in general, uh, some valve stenosis and aortic rotation, the evaluation of QPQS, so the shunt, uh, and some hemodynamics evaluation of complex pathologies such as, for example, fontan procedures, and just some words about complex parameters. So why revolution? Uh, two are the major points. One, one is the shortness of the exam, uh, because one of the major points in, uh, in children uh, is the problem that MRI is a real long exam, sometimes in its general anesthesia. So the real revolution uh, is to shorten the, these exams. So I don't know if everybody knows that a 4D complete sequence is acquired in a maximum 10 minutes even in children, even at high heart rate, even in small children. Uh, there is no need for general anesthesia, there is no need for breath holding. So it, this is a real technical revolution. And the impact is not only on patient tolerance and clinic feasibility, uh, but also on waiting lists and costs. The other issue is that, is that with this sequence of just 10 minutes, we may acquire not only uh, the parameters that we, we can acquire with other standard sequences, but we can also acquire some new parameters uh, that are not acquired with no any other sequence and we don't add any other exomes, invasive or not invasive, irradiant or not irradiant. And I will show you why. So how much information in 10 minutes? Tetralogy of follow. Uh, we need, uh, in, in this kind of patient, some essential information. One is about volumes. So you, you just listen to the, uh, the capaci capacity of the flow to acquire volumes and to calculate flows and shunt. So this is the case in this patient. Uh, you may calculate forward volume, backward volume, regurgitation fraction, peak velocity, if there is a stenosis, a residual stenosis, and also visualize the stenosis localization, especially in complex stenosis. Uh, when with echo, it's really complicated to um, estimate where is, where is the stenosis? Uh, these are some data that I just submitted one month ago that uh, with this, in this kind of patient, actually 4D flow is uh, at least as good as the previous standard 2D um, uh, sequence for flow volume calculation, uh, but also it's much more consistent, much more uh, re reproducible. Uh, you may add also the um, volumes quantification of right ventricle and left ventricle in 2D, uh, just uh, analyzing your um, uh, Cine image, or also in 4D volumes, and more or less the, the, the volumes are quite, uh, quite reproducible in the two kinds of techniques. Um, and the, the other uh, big issue is that, is that you may analyze the morphology of the entire pulmonary vasculature anatomy, uh, not only in a 3D way, but also in a dynamic way, so 4D. So you have a 3D, but it's in a dynamic way, and all this information in your sequence of 10 minutes. And you may actually evaluate peripheral stenosis, that's really challenging, and for, for which normally you need catheterization. Uh, you also may analyze the coronary position in fellow patients, especially when you need to, to uh, make um, a valvulation procedure and you need to estimate the position of coronary arteries in this kind of patient. Uh, and you say this is a, a, um, an unique uh, coronary artery. Uh, far from, in any case, right ventricular asphalt tract. You may estimate and calculate the pulmonary perfusion uh, and so uh, analyze the um, flow contribution to right lung, left lung, and of course uh, calculate 
collaterals. Um, when, when you have a stand, also this is uh, a, a, another really important issue, uh, you don't have uh, a lot of artifacts. And you may also evaluate not only the anatomy of the stand, but also calculate in a really accurate uh, way flow um, and also the the anatomy, the intrastant anatomy, the intrastant velocity, the intrastant uh, gradient, if there is one, uh, and also the peripheral vasculature after the stand. And this is just uh, an example of the anat intrastant anat anatomy. It's an image really challenging to obtain with a normal MRI. So about uh, valvular heart disease, Jean-François Jean Paul already talked to you about the, the, the big capacity of this sequence to analyze uh, valvular stenosis, uh, but you, you, you may also in children uh, have the same um, image quality. You may estimate the peak velocity, the arctic regurgitation if there is one, the direction of the jet, estimate and calculate the arctic root dilation uh, in the 2D image uh, on 4D flow sequence. Uh, estimate the direction of jet and analyze the streamlines to understand which part of the aorta is going to dilate. And also in aortic rotation, there are some nice papers about it and I may confirm that 4D flow actually adds a lot of important information. Not only you may have the essential surgical information for arch anatomy, make all your measurements, calculate peak velocity, calculate collateral flow, but also estimate the real physiology. For example, this is a, a really rare case of a complex aortic rotation in a 10 years old boy, 10 years old boy, <laughs> not old, um, just discovered on uh, arterial hypertension, uh, a screening, uh, and with 4D flow, actually, you may notice that there is no flow in isthmic aorta. There is practical an occlusion of isthmic aorta. It is a real important information if you want to approach this lesion uh, by uh, interventional procedure, not by surgical way. And you know, our, this, the, the descending aorta is, was perfused only by two big collaterals. And for example, after standing of the aorta, you may analyze the intrastant anatomy, calculate the gradient, calculate the peak velocity, uh, analyze all the shape of the aorta, the flow characteristics, and the dilation post-stand. This is a case of re the same stuff. You may, in any case, um, uh, analyze the measurement on no color image, and analyze the gradient, and pr uh, localize precisely where the gradient is to understand how to manage and to treat this patient. About fonts and palliation, it is a really sexy topic now uh, on 4D flow. But not speaking about uh, complex parameters, I'd like just to speak on usual parameters that you may measure in your routine life. Actually, you uh, have a lot of information that you can't have with other techniques. Uh, we may st you may study actually the distribution of flow, uh, the anatomy of the circuit, uh, the direction of the jet, the pulmonary perfusion, and estimate in a consistent and precise way all the collateral venous and arterial flow. Uh, so this is the same patient that is uh, a, a really asymmetrical distribution of the flow. Uh, and so you, you just, you, you already saw how to calculate it in the, the previous topics and talks. Uh, so always, um, also in complex fontan, you may calculate the distribution of flow. And for example, in this patient, uh, actually we did not know before doing 4D flow that there was a, a really asymmetrical uh, pulmonary perfusion uh, because in an anatomical point of view to the two pulmonary arteries were hypoplastic but symmetrical uh, and during 4D flow measurement actually you may notice that there is a really um, unbalanced pulmonary perfusion. Uh, this is another case of totally disconnected pulmonary arteries. The right pulmonary artery is provided by a gland and the left pulmonary artery is provided by a BT shunt. Uh, so you may analyze and you have an information that you, you never had before about the pulmonary perfusion in this kind of patient. And you may imagine that at, at the right you will have a lot of um, collaterals uh, because the, actually the volume of uh, pulmonary perfusion is really different by the gland and by the BT shunt. And then in this complex patient, for example, uh, uh, really cyanotic, uh, even after um, percutaneous closure of fenestration, actually we discovered a big venous fistula with two liters per minute of uh, stroke volume uh, draining in coronary sinus. Um, passing to a more simple 
um, pathologists. Uh, for example, normally we categorize patients to uh, estimate the QPQS uh, for interlateral septal defects or interventricular septal defects. You may imagine that with 4D flow, it's really easy to calculate the QPQS. Uh, and also, for example, in partial anomalous pulmonary venous return, to visualize actually the anomaly. Uh, in a dynamic point of view, that for the surgeon is really important, uh, and calculate the flow wherever you want. And for example, in this patient, we discovered uh, a second partial anomalous because the patient was supposed to have just uh, a right anomalous pulmonary venous return, but we discovered another anomaly at left with the right upper left vein draining in the um, innominous vein. Um, and uh, then you may use 4D flow in more complex pathology, for example, the really challenging one and half ventricle repair for hypoplastic right ventricle, in this case, for example, after pulmonary atresia correction, uh, and then palliated by a gland. Uh, and you may estimate and calculate and precise all the complex uh, hemodynamics. So all these measurements, actually you can't have access to these measurements with CAT or with CT scan or with previous MRI. Uh, also with uh, uh, complex valvular pathologies, such as Epstein anomaly, um, the surgeon is really happy uh, of it because you may study exactly the physiology of the valve with the streamlines, with the anatomy of the valve, and this patient palliated by the gland estimated the tricuspid regurgitation, the physiology of the gland, so the volume uh, of the gland, and collateral flow, in this case, to the right gland. Of course, you may do a lot of complex analysis that we are uh, doing now with several research projects ongoing. Uh, with 4D flow um, and about anatomy, about velocity, about streamlines, wall shear stress. Uh, but uh, it was not my topic today. I, I just want to, to stress that, especially in congenital heart disease, we need to share our experience. We need to share our knowledge uh, and our data. So the, the cloud, I'm really supporting cloud computing because with cloud, actually I could uh, constitute my little or big, depends on how you see it, uh, my 4D flow team all over the world uh, was totally unconceivable before the cloud uh, computing. Uh, and I hope that this group will grow uh, and becoming bigger and bigger um, because it's the only strength that we have is to work together. So thank you all.